Greetings, trombonists at large. I am the Vegan Trombone, here to talk to you today about something that uh, you probably already read know. We're going to talk today about the good old Plumber's Helper. I'd cue some music and fancy graphics, but, you know, I'm, I'm cheap and I don't do that kind of thing. So, what are we going to talk about? The plunger is what I considered the fourth most important mute I ever owned. Now, of course, the first most important mute I ever owned was a straight mute, and it'll be your most important mute, too. I did a video of it a million years ago, and that's how that works out. Now, for me, the second most important mute I ever owned was a cup mute. Some of you may need a bucket mute long before you'll need a cup mute, but for me, it was a cup mute. And then, of course, a third mute was the bucket mute. And now we've gotten to the fourth most important mute I ever owned, which is, of course, the good old family friend, the plumber's helper. Now, the plumber's helper, the first one I ever owned, is actually this little dandy. And... Um, I bought it for 59 cents, got on my old Schwinn Stingray and rode on up to Keen's Hardware at the corner, about a mile and a half away, and I bought this for 59 cents. Uh, no stick. Uh, stick included, but I didn't, well, that's a story for a different time. Now, when you look at these, you'll notice there are other companies that make plungers. This is the kind that you really want to get, this classic looking one, not the one with the gusset inside or any of those. But there are other people that make them. There's this one made by, I don't even know who makes this one, but it's it's uh, handy. It's got a little handle on it. And then, of course, there's the good old Humes and Berg, which uh, I happen to have had. This is my second one. I had an older one. I got it at a trade show a million years ago. And it had a ring on the top, like a real rounded style, like a wedding ring style on top. And everyone I ever knew got this, that ring would break. So they announced that they had made a new and reinforced ring on it. and So I bought it. Uh, this is probably the only new mute that I've bought in a long time. But um, the reason for buying this is because when it sits on the floor, it's easier to pick up. It sits a little taller than does the standard plunger when it's sitting on the floor. And so it's just easier to grab. I typically put my plunger on my trombone stand or on top of another mute. So that is what I standard, what I typically do with my plunger when I'm trying to set up for a gig. Now the plunger mute that I personally use most of the time is actually this one. This one, as you can see, they're the same. This one, as these things get older, as these mutes get older, they get hard. And the problem is when they get hard, and you go to use them, they make they make a lot of noise on your horn. They still work just fine, but it's noisy. And another thing that happens is when this rubber starts to get hard, it starts to get like this glossy sheen on it. Now I have another mute that I have that I bought later, and I actually, I sprayed it with lacquer because the band leader wanted us to all have shiny mutes. So I sprayed it with lacquer, and it got really gross on the inside, like the really sweaty on the inside. And the rubber actually started to like flake apart. These get old and hard and then the rubber just kind of crumbles. And that's been happening to this one too. I've had this mute since 1975. So 59 cents with stick. <laughs> so in Japan, after I, that one went bad, I, I got, I left the hotel. I went over to the local Psycho Mart and I, bought myself this new one and it's not made out of rubber it's made out of some kind of a styrene plastic and um, not styrene it's uh, some kind of a vinyl plastic and though it works it has a slightly different character of sound than the rubber one it's a little brighter sounding than the old rubber ones are. The issue with these old rubber mutes is that as they age, they get this oily film on them. And what had happened is I had flown to Japan and this mute had ridden in my mute bag in the cargo hold and somehow it had caused the mute to release a bunch of that sticky oil. 
and uh, it was uh, slimy, and I didn't want to use it. That's why I went to Psycho Mart and bought the other mute to replace this one instead of just using it on that trip because it, uh, and to this day, it's got this weird film on it. That's what came out of the other mute when I, I lacquered it and it couldn't breathe. The rubber couldn't breathe. So what's the difference between this one that you can get and a standard plunger? This mute is a little bit smaller. It's vented. It has a little hole in the bottom. I made the hole a little bit bigger. I don't think you can see it. Than, than the hole, you want to vent your plunger mutes because if you don't, they, if I completely seal this up, there's very little deflection in the sound of, in the sound of the mute. And if I use this one, it can be really hard to, yeah, watch out for the stick. That's why they don't want you to use the stick in the band. Um, it can be, it can be really out of tune. It's hard to keep the mute in tune. So you want to vent your mute. And I have a story about that too. <laughs> I got my first mute, this one here, and it was soft rubber like that other one that I just bought today and to make this video. And um, yes, no expense spared to make this video. I, uh, I, I took, a, my father said, oh, you know, you're going to have to cut a hole in that mute. So I said, okay. So I very proudly went over and thought I would do it all right, right? I went and got my X-Acto knife to go and cut it out. And I stuck my X-Acto knife, I sat down, I put it on my knee, and I jabbed the X-Acto knife into it, and the mute collapsed. And I was afraid that I had stabbed my leg with the X-Acto knife. Fortunately, the rubber is really tough, and I couldn't get all the way through it, so it didn't collapse onto my leg, and I did not end up needing to go to the hospital and get sp stitches. So if you buy a, a plunger like this and you're going to uh, vent it, be careful. Don't do it on your leg. And also another thing about it, this rubber is thick and it's hard to cut. I ended up using a drill, drilling a hole and then using a Dremel and boring it out is what I ended up doing. So do it outside and if you can, wear a mask because it just goes everywhere and it smells awful. But um, the differences in the sounds of these mutes there's, of course, there's the standard plumber's helper. And then there's this little mute. Almost sounds the same. It's a little brighter sound, and it's not a bad little mute at all. And like I said, it's got this little thing on top, so it's easy to grab. But there's a reason why I don't use this mute, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then, of course, there's the Humes and Berg. This mute gets a nice, big sound, which is why I bought another one. Because once in a while, maybe I'll want to have that sound. <laughs> this mute is also vented. It's got three very small holes drilled through the top. You will need to make those holes bigger. I made those holes bigger also. They don't need to be a lot bigger but just enough to reduce the compression in the mute so it doesn't drive your pitch all wonky. But as you can hear, the differences in this one, I don't know if you could hear it or not, actually, but this one gets a bigger sound when I put it, when I put it on. This has a brighter sound. It's not as deep. So there are times where I might want that other sound. And there are also things that we need with these mutes. There is a one other kind of mute that is called a plunger. And it is this one. This is the Glenn Miller Tuxedo Mute. Well, I was playing in a, uh, years ago, I was playing, uh, years many years, like decades ago, I was playing in a big band. It was a society band. We wore tuxedos and had little plastic boutonnieres that, that we would wear on our lapels. And the band leader brought the mutes. He didn't want us using these lowly, low-class plumber's helpers. We had to have fancier mutes. So he had a bunch of these old uh, Glenn Miller tuxedo mutes. And this mute, 
It actually sounds pretty good with the flocking inside. But I never really liked it because it's cumbersome to hold. Easy to pick up, it's got a nice metal handle on it, but it's cumbersome for me to hold. My hands aren't very big. I am much happier holding on to the standard plumber's helper. Now, another mute that I inherited from that band was this mute. This is a derby. He didn't want us just using a rag or uh, throwing a towel over, a, over a, a ball cap or something. We had these, and these... We had stands for these, and big metal stands, and you'd put it in there and you'd lock it down, and then you could just move your bell when we would play into these. And uh, unfortunately, the reason why I still have these mutes is because the band leader died and they never asked for them back. And I really would have loved to have had the stand for this, but uh, I never had the guts to go to the widow's house and knock on the door and say, hey, I used to play in the band and I happen to know that he's got a bunch of stands for these mutes. Uh, no, I just sent her a letter of condolences and uh, said how much I enjoyed working with the band. And uh, good enough. So, why do I not like this little mute? You heard me play it. Sounds good. Fits in the hand well. It's a nice shape. Two reasons. One, it's black. And when it sits on the floor and I'm in an orchestra pit or in another dark kind of venue, I can't see it sitting there and I'll miss it. Another reason why I like this mute. And it's also one of the reasons why I chose this mute over the standard color, even though they, it's this vinyl-y pla uh, vinyl plastic, and they were like bright fire engine red. They weren't really that dull rubber red. They were bright red. So I, uh, I went with the more muted color. Uh, the nice thing about these kinds of mutes is they're softer. You can change the shape. <laughs> So you can get different kinds of sounds, almost a muted sound with that. But uh, back to this, the reason why I didn't like this mute was because if I wanted to use this piece of World War II ordnance, which you chuck into a, you pull the fuse and chuck it into another trench. If you wanted to use this, it doesn't fit in my horn. It doesn't fit over it. It, it, it kind of teeters around and so I can't can't use it the same way that I want to if I go for the big mute so this is called a pixie mute. Now when I worked in that other band, I told you the society band, I used to use that pixie mute because I didn't want to go through the expense of buying this mute, which is the tuxedo straight. Now it sounds just like a regular straight mute. <laughs> problem with it is you can't play low on it because it's so small. Yeah, it just loses all focus. Up high, it works great. And it works really well with the good old tuxedo cup. But I prefer, I prefer the sound of the pixie, just, I'll play the pixie. The pixie has pitch issues, but it's a nicer kind of a sound. And this just sounds like a straight mute. This has a little more interest, a little more character. 
So when I do play it with my plunger, It's got more personality to it. In fact, this was the first mute I ever used because I watched Charlie Brown on television. And, you know, ever, after that, every kid who had a trombone. Yeah, we all wanted to play like chickens or sound like inaudible teachers. So, the Pixie Mute, you want to own this. If you get a plunger, you may as well get one of these too. They come in handy. And it makes it more, a little more fun for soloing, but you got to practice with this because, man, it's they, they're they're a challenge to play, and um, they can be a little troublesome. You could go with tuxedo mute for those society games, but the mute that I prefer is, in fact, your standard plumber's helper. I uh, I went out and bought this one today. And I was going to tell you the story about the, the handle. And uh, when I went to the hardware store and I bought this mute for 59 cents with stick, I went in, I rode my Schwinn up to the up to the hardware store and Mr. Keene was there and I went in and I said, I need a plunger. And he said, oh, you don't have a plunger? I said, yeah, no. And so he went and he, he uh, pointed me to where they were and I went down and I grabbed this part. And he said, uh, don't you want the stick? You'll need the stick. And I said, no, I don't need the stick. So, but he still went down. He picked me out a very fine looking piece of wood. And I went up uh, and he brought it up to the register and I went to the register and I gave him my 60 cents for the mute. And I left the stick. I just tied the bag onto the handlebars of my shoe and I rode home. And, and as I left, they had the oddest looking expression on their face. Like, what is he gonna do without the stick? I mean, I guess they thought I was just gonna reach into the toilet, you know. <laughs> Yeah, oh boy. Yeah. So yeah, I can understand their concern when I left without the stick. But um yeah. An addendum to that story is that at the end of the day when my father came home, he handed me the stick. He said he'd stop by the supermarket and Mr. Keene happened to see him and came running out with it in a bag. And uh he seemed rather concerned that I hadn't taken the stick home with me when I had visited the store earlier in the day. Although I did get a stick later for that mute because when I was on the road with a band, I was playing with this band leader. Uh, we were we were on the road and he would come out and do the hokiest shtick. He'd say, we're now going to use this fabled mute on this next tune. I assure you, they're all clean. And uh, you know, then of course we'd all take them out, start smelling them. And uh, he would say, oh, and we use them without the stick. And I would take mine and, of course, I'd... And get a big laugh when I would just barely almost hit the other guy sitting next to me in the face. So then I would make a big deal. And uh, the problem was, I got the big laugh at his dopey shtick about using clean mutes, clean plungers, and how this was a symbol of staying in some of the finest worst hotels across the country so yeah good way to get fired but not that time that that, that came later <laughs> but in the meantime this is my favorite mute this one comes in close second only because it's easy to pick up and it's got a nice deep sound if i'm going to use it with a pixie mute i prefer using it with a traditional pixie and what am I going to do with this thing that I just newly purchased for this video? Well, I guess I'm going to punch a hole in it and use it as a plunger mute since what the heck, right? I actually like the sound of the traditional rubber. <laughs> If you want to hear some great plunger playing, listen to Wyclef. 
he is a master with the plunger. I had the great fortune of sitting next to Buster Cooper when I was a young man playing in the band. And uh, I got most of what I know from the plunger from Buster. But, uh, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. And, well, I don't know if I've helped you with anything. But, you know, just remember. Keep it clean and you'll be just fine. Thanks for watching.